Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Melissa Siegel. I'm a professor of migration studies and this is a channel about all things migration. And today we are talking specifically about highly skilled migration and we're going to be looking at a new tool from the OECD that looks at indicators of talent attractiveness. So this is a great tool for highly skilled migrants themselves to actually figure out which countries in the world make the most sense or might be most attractive for them depending on your own preferences. So let's jump in to the tool and understand a little bit more about highly skilled migration. So first of all, how do we even define highly skilled migration? So there's no universally accepted definition of highly skilled migrants. Um, of course, some countries do issue specific residence permits or work permits for, you know, quote unquote, highly skilled immigrants, and they use a combination of different measurements. So now at the UN level, um, highly skilled migrants are generally defined for statistical purposes as m any migrants that have a tertiary level of education. So any migrant that has basically more than secondary school levels of education. Now, when it comes to individual countries um, and, the, and their definition of who they consider a highly skilled migrant or who they're going to give a visa or a residence permit to as far as being highly skilled, now they often use one or a combination of a number of measurements or indicators to define who the highly skilled are. And a combination of these things could be, for example, education, so especially post-secondary degrees, bachelor, master, doctoral degrees, um, prior work experience or specific type of job or job sector. And some countries actually look at the income earned in the destination above a specific threshold because this is highly correlated with education, work experience, type of job, um, and often, uh, you know, where there might be shortages in general in uh, the labor sector. So that's how we kind of see highly skilled migration defined about around the world. Again, no universally agreed upon definition. There are different ways that countries handle this. Now let's turn our attention to this new indicator of talent attractiveness tool developed by the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, or maybe better known as the OECD. So it measures member state strengths and weaknesses when attracting and retaining talented migrants. So there are three types of talented migrant workers that they're basically looking at. So highly educated workers, so these could be people with master or doctoral degrees, foreign entrepreneurs, and also university students. Now, for the OECD, they conceptualize talent attractiveness in terms of migration policy development, as well as outcomes. And they see more favorable policies towards migrants, meaning basically a more attractive country in this regard for those types of migrants. Now, there are a number of dimensions of talent attractiveness that they are looking at. So uh, they look at, you know, quality of opportunities. So that looks at things like labor market opportunities, university prestige, and more. They look at income and taxes. So here, of course, they're looking at earnings, cost of living, tax rates, things like that. They look at future prospects, which is looking at things like favorable integration prospects, access to citizenship, and more. They also look at a favorable family environment. So this looks at opportunities for, for family members for migration and, and working, childcare costs, family benefits, things like that. They also look at the skills environment. So what does the R&D look like in the country or the research and, and development um, environment? the connectivity, English proficiency, and more. They also look at inclusiveness. So this looks at diversity, um, actual natives attitudes towards migration, gender equality, and more. And they also look at the quality of life. And they do this by looking at the OECD um, Better Life Index, which covers environment, income, and, and other things. And then what we also see is to use the tool so the idea is that um, skilled or highly skilled migrants go in and use this tool to figure out which countries match them and their needs the best. So um, to use the tool, users indicate each dimension of importance to them. So they can say kind of less important, important, or more important. And based on that, 
then uh, this tool tells you which countries are probably best for you. So this was a quick little introduction to the tool, but now let's go in and play around with it. The Talent Attractiveness Tools webpage has a brief introduction at the top, followed by an interactive graph where visitors can indicate their preferences and see the resulting talent attractiveness score for 35 countries. Here, countries with higher scores are considered more attractive to skilled migrants. To use the tool, we first select our category using the drop-down menu at the left. For this example, we will look at highly educated workers since possession of a university degree is a very common definition used for skilled migrants. For each dimension of talent attractiveness, we can then indicate their importance in a potential destination country. Let's look at talent attractiveness for someone who is highly concerned with opportunity, family environment, and inclusiveness. These are priorities that someone looking to move with their family would likely have. We see that the graph automatically updates as we make our selections. Thus, our final rankings show that Australia, Switzerland, and Sweden are among the most attractive to highly educated migrants with these preferences, while Italy, Greece, Mexico, and Turkey are among the least attractive. Now, Let's watch what happens when keeping these preferences but switching to the university student category. We see that on average, all country scores decrease. Australia also falls significantly in the rankings while Germany and Norway rise up. This is due to different policies that govern student migration versus labor migration. And it appears that overall, OECD country policies towards students do not satisfy the seven dimensions to the same extent as labor migration policies. We can also compare two countries by clicking the top left link. This generates a graph where two selected country scores for the three migrant categories can be plotted together so their differences can be easily observed. We can also compare all countries by individual dimensions when clicking on the top middle link. On this graph, all three migrant types are plotted on a vertical line per country and then users can select their dimensions of interest from the top row to see how countries compare. I hope you found this video useful. If you tried it, if you uh, tried this tool and you found it useful, please comment down below. Of course, share information that might be useful for others too here in the comment section. This channel is all about trying to be as useful and as helpful for all of you spreading as much good and correct information about migration as possible. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please do and hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of the videos that we upload every week on different migration issues. And I hope to see you next time. Bye-bye.